Hello friends again. We keep going guys. This is why I'm taking my coffee. Okay. I feel like just doing chess today guys. So don't blame me. I'm going to keep going until you guys stop me. Alright. So our next game uh, is um, Mikhail Tal um, against uh, David Bronstein in uh, 1959. Again, let us take a look at the type of center here. And see how these guys are going to handle it. Mikhail Tal and David Bronstein. Alright. So our theme opening for today is the Royal Lopez. Maybe you guys should consider playing the Royal Lopez after this uh, series. Because I'm sure your understanding of it now is already, you know, is up there. Alright, so here. This is all standard. Now, if I may ask you, what type of a center do we have? We have a fixed center, which means white is aiming for d5 and f5, whilst black would be aiming for the square on f4. I don't see how black can easily occupy this square on d4 for now because of this pawn which sits on c3. All right, which means uh, white has a better chance of, of occupying those squares because he's actually targeting two of them and black is only targeting one at the moment. All right, so let us proceed. So, uh, Bronstein plays bishop e6, knight e3. We already know what Tao wants to do. All right, if it's not knight f5, it's going to be knight d5. All right. Queen e2. Knight to g5. All right, why would he play knight to g5? I think, it's just me, please don't blame me. All right, I'm just saying how I see it. All right, so in this position, I think Tal wanted to occupy the d5 square because clearly the f5 is going to be difficult now to occupy. Sorry, the f5 is going to be difficult to occupy because of this uh, pawn on g6. All right, but Tal still has a chance, a good chance, of occupying the d5 square in the future because the d5 square is already a weak square which means it cannot be prevented by a pawn so if he supports it very well he should be able to take control of it so i think this knight g5 move is just me all right i'm just calculating with you guys now as, as we are going through the game i'm thinking tell Played knight to g5 because this bishop is kind of preventing him from occupying uh, the d5 square as well as this knight. So he played knight g5 in the hope, in the hope that, um, in the hope that uh, maybe black would run away with this knight, uh, this bishop. So let's just say maybe bishop here. And moves like knight d5 might become possible. For instance, knight captures, pawn captures. Knowing Tau, he might probably go for this. It's Tau. Okay. King, queen check. All right. If the king goes here, of course, then bishop is going to capture. So maybe black might go king g7 first and then queen. And this just leads to disaster. All right. I don't know how it's going to end, but it just looks pretty good for uh, for white. And in any case, white already has a draw in the bag if black is to capture. Right. White just has to decide whether he wants to try and push for a win or just to keep a draw. Maybe bring in the rook as well. Um, maybe, sorry, maybe here, maybe... Maybe even bring in the rook. I don't know. But this just looks pretty uh, good for, um, for white. It's just my thinking, guys. 
right let's go back to the position so this is why i think maybe tau played um knight to g5 and for black to leave his bishop there also it doesn't look that good why because after um, after white captures this if black recaptures with the pawn this is gonna leave uh, black with the double pawn structure now remember double pawns is amongst the weaknesses uh, that we've looked at and it's not good all right so let us proceed with the game he played knight g5 pawn to c4 okay let's go back pawn to c4 so um black did not black did not uh, move his bishop away i guess because of that knight d5 and uh, he had no decent way of uh, trying to defend the bishop so maybe he just chose to play c4 okay tal did not capture he went a4 captures all right now remember the main theme the main idea of a fixed center is to occupy other squares supported by the pawn in the middle but at the moment it's very difficult for white to control them because those uh, squares are well uh, taken care of they are being um, uh, attacked there's bishop there's a knight and a rook okay so it's not easy for white to occupy them uh, right away all right but i would like to believe that tau still is um, looking for ways to occupy that place because he knows the principles they dictate that we control, we occupy those squares. So let us see how he is going to manage to do it. All right, so this position he went, rook to b1. Okay, possibly trying to play b3 and maybe just uh, um, open up. Maybe after b3, pawn takes b3, bishop takes b3, exchanging the bishop and still um, trying to go for the uh, d5 square. So he plays knight a5, preventing white from pushing the pawn. Because if white is to push the pawn, double step, then black would capture it with 100%, right? So black plays knight a5. Okay. White moves back to f3. I think he has change of ideas now. He probably now wants to go to f5, right? But he's just pretending maybe as if he's attacking uh, the pawn on e5 when in actual effect he wants to go knight h4 and possibly knight f5. Knowing it's tau, anything is possible, you know? So, yeah. Let us see what happened next. Queen c7. Boom! <laughs> He could not be patient any longer. Mikhail Tal for you. He knows the principle dictates that we place the pieces where they are supported by the pawn in the center. And he could not wait any longer. So he plays it right away. There you have it. We have a fixed center and Tal places the knight where it's supported by the pawn in the center. Just like we spoke about. All right, how does black continue? He grabs. Okay, then he plays rook to e8. Tal exchanges, offers an exchange of queens. All right, so it's a bit equal now. What type of a center do we have now? Before we had um, a fixed center, and that's why Tal had to play knight d5 to a place where it was are supported by the pawn but now we have an open center what do we do we focus on the big pieces now let us see there goes a big piece big piece big piece check right capturing is not such a great idea great move because after black captures white has knight I have to capture here and after rook to um, d1 and uh, this is not um, that easy all right or even uh, black could play rook a5 
and I think uh, white is, is slightly better, if not clearly better. All right, so let us see how the game proceeded. So after bishop check, he moved back, knight c6, rook to d1, it's kind of forced here. Captures. Okay, the rook is threatening um, the pawn. Sorry, the rook is threatening the pawn on d5, on b5. And the bishop on e7 is pinned. Black proceeded with f6. White grabs the pawn. Grabs the second pawn. Pins the bishop so as to stop the king from proceeding to g6 all right because the bishop uh, would be left unprotected only protected by the rook so rook to b7 rook e6 exchange then he plays um h4 attempting to free his bishop all right so if black is to capture this would free white's bishop for now, the bishop is kind of locked. So after h4, rook to g8, he goes f4. Now there is no way uh, of, of, of not opening up for the bishop. The bishop is going to come out forcefully. Right. If black is to capture, for instance, then white would proceed with f5 and the bishop again is out and i don't think this pawn can be captured because of rook takes the bishop so i think after pawn to f4 uh, black does not have much of a choice here but to free up uh, the bishop on h6 all right so how did he continue he played bishop check king f1 rook to b5 check that's a poison pawn all right Black cannot capture, it's not good because of bishop e3 and this bishop is pinned, winning for white. So after f5, what did black play? Let us see. King, he went b4 and um, black miscalculated. Okay, it's a miscalculation. He went h3. He's just trying his luck. Basically, this is lost for black, but he's just trying his luck. I think black was hoping that when white captures the bishop, okay, like this, he would be able to move to h2, and it's impossible to stop the pawn from promoting. But what he missed, though, is this bishop check. All right. And that's exactly how the game transpired. All right, so let us see. Rook captures. He pushed. Bishop check. And black resigned. Again, guys, we had a fixed center. And you saw how difficult it was uh, for Tal to control those squares which were supported uh, by uh, the pawn in the center. Until he just had to sacrifice. He just had to place his piece there. And it worked out well for him. Again, uh, that's a super grandmaster. They're following the principles of the centers. Let's have a quick recap on that position again. Okay, so it was here. This was the critical moment. Queen c7. And I'm sure by this position, Tal figured out that it's going to be tough. For him to ever move the knight there because it's well supported. I mean, black is a knight, a bishop, and a rook, and it's going to be very tough. Almost impossible for him to play the knight there. So what did he do? He just chose to play it right away. And it worked well for him. Check. All right, and the rest is history. All right, so guys, are you learning something? First, we looked at the close center, and you saw how these grandmasters um, handle the close centers. And now we've been looking at the fixed centers, two games from Tal, and you saw how uh, he's been very successful with this principle of occupying uh, those squares 
um, with the big pieces. All right, so we're just going to take a short break and we come back. We are going to look at other types of centers and see how these grandmasters are handling these types of centers. All right. <music>